So Kobe, and, and I mean, just tragic. It's a big family, the NBA. I mean, just any comments on what it's been like to, to show up at games now after that? I mean, anyone really want to play at this point? Or they play harder? What, what's happening? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's so complicated to even get it through your head. Um, you know, I just talked to Kobe last week. Um, you know, I got to know, you know, I was fortunate. I got to, you know, spend a lot of time with Kobe starting about seven years ago. Um, you know, the one thing I'll say about Kobe is what made him successful on the court and that absolutely, you know, working harder than anybody else was the same thing I saw from him in business. I remember when we first met in, uh, in, in 2013, he would literally call me before a game, after a game. There were sometimes he, he reached out 10, 20 times in a day because he had so many questions about how to do things in business. And, and I said back in 2013, I said, this guy's second act is going to be better than his first act. And you talk about a guy who won five championships and... You know, he was, you know, he was so incredible driving, you know, the entire sport and his team on the court. But, you know, his intensity off the court was, was, was the saber even more. And you saw the same thing with his family. So, you know, I think the, I think the world's heartbroken. I think um, it's not just the basketball world. You know, I think everyone's trying to do what Kobe would want us to do. I ended up having a, a, a conversation with Steph Curry after we played the Warriors um, earlier this week. And we were both looking at each other saying, like, you know, Kobe would, you know, Kobe would want, you know, Kobe would want, us to find a positive in this and find out how to make you stronger. And to be honest, I don't think anyone's found it yet, but, um, you know, I think that that's, that's what he would want. But obviously I think the world's devastated and we've lost one of the, not only one of the best basketball players in the, in the world, but just a great human being. I'm surprised that, that you didn't have some type of joint business venture. Did you with Kobe at all? Cause you're, you have an eye for talent and, and I'm just surprised you guys didn't find anything to do together. Well, we, we were we were always talking about different business things to do do together. And we actually, when I was uh, working by the Carolina Panthers, I spent a lot of time with him, talking about having him part of my ownership group. Um, I'll tell you one of the great one of the great things with Kobe, and, and and I remember this like it was yesterday. He told me when he was in 2013, he was just asking me question after question about business, and and uh, he started talking to me about this company called Body Armor. And he's like, I love this company. I'm telling you, Michael, like my instincts are telling me this is going to be huge. And he made the investment in that company. I think he made like I think he put five and a half million dollars in, and I think he made 250 or. $400 yeah. billion, dollars from, yeah. and that was his first investment. So here's this guy, whoever, you know, so many people can be skeptical and say, hey, is he going to be successful when he transitions from uh, basketball to business? And the first investment he made, he made, like, literally a 50X plus. So, uh, but that's Kobe. I mean, he was just an absolute winner in everything that he did. And, um, you, know, we're, you know, the whole world's going to miss him dearly.